Um, this has a consequence that marginal revenue is less than price. Um, let's consider a very simple case, if it helps, sometimes it does, a graphical case. This, it, let's assume that uh, there's a, that first of all, there is a, the, the, it is a competitive industry. So we've got atomistic competition, we've got lots and lots of individual providers. Just to remind you why I'm doing all this, I'm doing all this to explain why markets are so wonderful before I then point out why they don't work in healthcare. I think we have to do it that way around, otherwise it's me or anybody else just asserting markets are not a good way to allocate things, we must do it with, with more regulation. Um, this could represent the supply curve for the, for the industry if it, was a, if it was a competitive industry, lots of individual suppliers and as the price rises they begin to supply a bit, want to supply more into this marketplace and so if we add together all the quantities they wish to supply, um, it could give us this curve. Higher price, greater quantity. Um, sorry, I should say, but it's so much in the sort of mother's milk of economists. We do have mothers. We're not as evil as that, as not having mothers. Um, Q is quantity, yeah, and P is price. So I should say that. And the demand curve, um, high price, a bit less demanded. As the price falls, more demanded. And so what we expect, and I'll explain this again in a minute, we would expect to end up at this point here where at this particular price, call it P star, the amount people want to demand, which we can read off here, Q star, is just equal to the amount firms want to supply. You can read off the supply curve, Q star. Right. Now, if we have a monopolist, a single seller, this is actually interesting in terms of language. We'll tend to talk about he, which is strange language. Why not she? It's a bit like when we, t well, may not be quite the same, but we talk about God and we often, or in some countries, I have to recognize it's not the same everywhere. We talk about God as a he and uh, of course, she, we all know she's a she. No, I don't. Anyway, excuse my language, I'm not trying to be, I would like to be gender neutral. So, the monopolist, they, <laughs> they face all the demand curve, it's all theirs, they've no other, nobody competing with them. And so, they don't just have to go to a price like P star, or any price, they can choose any price they like, but that will imply different quantities that they can sell. <coughs> now the implication of this is, if, they want, if they're up here with a high price and they want to sell a bit more, they have to lower the price. And that means for each additional unit they sell, they're getting a smaller increase in revenue uh, we call it the marginal revenue, than the price they were charging, because they have to lower the price to sell the next unit. So it has the implication that the money they're receiving, or the change in total revenue, is, down, is given by this downward sloping demand curve, um, downward sloping marginal revenue curve. And so the profit maximizing point for a monopolist is that point where the addition to costs, their marginal cost, is just equal to additional addition to revenue, the marginal revenue. And at that point, QM, they maximize profits. Now, this has, a, this has a, a familiar ring to it. The idea that monopolists charge high prices. Because compared to the competitive situation of P star, we've got a higher price here, PM. So what the monopolist does is restrict the quantity and that pushes up the price. Uh, this is rather bad for society. 
arguably, um, because we have a, something called a dead weight loss. Now, this demand curve is it's, it's, it's showing what people are willing to pay to get the good or service. Uh, so, you can imagine the area under the demand curve is the, is the amount of benefit that people are getting. So if we're at a, if we're at a small quantity um, being purchased, um, the people who, well, not too small, a small quantity here, the people who make up this part of the demand curve, the people purchasing it, they value this good very highly. So they're willing to pay a large amount. Once we're getting down to this part of the demand curve, the individuals making up this part of the demand curve, they're not willing to pay nearly so much. They have a lower valuation. And so actually, the, the height of the curve, if you like, indicates how highly individuals value the good. And so, the, um, if we think of all the people in this section of the demand curve, they, their valuation of the good is given by this large area here. So I'm just adding up all their willingnesses to pay. An alternative interpretation of the demand curve is your willingness to pay. And so this area represents the value to these consumers of purchasing the good. Similarly, the area under the Marshall cost curve or the supply curve of the monopolist, that represents the benefit, um, sorry, the area, that represents the cost they have, to, they have to give, they have to incur, the cost they have to incur to supply the good, they cover their costs, but that means there's another part above the cost curve which is a surplus to the monopolist. Now, right, so, retrace one. The competitive situation will have us here. The monopolistic situation will have us here. The monopolist is going to um, reduce quantity to charge a higher price. But society is going to be worse off than we were here because this area of benefit is lost. Now, we've actually lost all this benefit here under the demand curve, but we've saved these resources here under the marginal cost curve. And so this is lost. Now, it's not gone into anyone's pocket. You know, the government hasn't gained it or something like that. It's gone forever. And we actually call it a dead weight loss. And this is the simple reason why monopoly is seen as a bad idea. Now, it does get a little bit more complicated when we're thinking about the supply of new drugs, because we go out of our way to make firms into monopolists. We say, we will give you patent protection for X years. We will say nobody can produce a similar drug. They are not allowed to. And so we are making monopolists. Now, there might be a good reason for that, but we, we, that would be another lecture. OK, but there's a deadweight loss, so monopoly, bad idea. Question, yes? Uh, I may have missed uh, what you just said, but uh, what does that M stand for? Sorry, Marge, I, you didn't miss it. I forgot to say it. Marginal benefit. Oh, okay. So we can look upon a demand curve as the quantity demanded at each price, but it's also showing us the marginal benefit. It's showing how much, that con how much benefit the consumer gets from that unit of the good or service. Marginal benefit. Thank you for pointing that out. OK, so this is just putting it in words, which might be easier for some people. Some people like pictures. Um, Monopolist is an incentive to restrict output, push up prices compared to the competitive market. It's not efficient, or what we say allocatively efficient, because at the, at, at the level of output that the monopolist chooses, the marginal benefit 
from additional units exceeds the marginal cost. So at the point the, the, the monopolist chooses, the marginal cost to society, the, the goods, the time, the inputs that are used up to produce the next unit is given by this amount here. The marginal benefit, the next consumer who gets a unit, values it up here. And so that's why it's a bad allocation from society's point of view. Because if we were here and we moved increased output and moved to the competitive solution, we would gain this blue area. So that's why, it, because at this point, the marginal benefit is just equal to the marginal cost. If we produce even more and we go, we go out here somewhere, well then the marginal benefit is now below marginal cost and so it's inefficient in the other direction. Only at this point here do we have the two equal. Are you feeling that inner scream yet? Hmm? Right, let's hope not. Okay, right. Um, there's various things we can do. Sometimes we introduce price controls, sometimes we break up monopolists, um, sometimes. Um, sometimes we give people, we sell people the right to be a monopolist. And that's a way of trying to capture back some of the, the benefit.